Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. It's going to make our lives so much easier. <laughs> Batteries, they're magic. They're magic. All right. Whew. Anyone else feel like today is just kind of off? Just me. Just me. Okay. Um, so, you may have noticed, possibly, that um, it takes us about four weeks to process the bread gospels. It takes a long time. We just keep coming back to it. Um, and, and I don't know. Do you guys ever get sick of the bread gospels? You're like, it's, it's been a month. And you're like, I could just go to church one week in this month, and I would get all of it. Um, But here's the thing about communion. It's kind of like the Trinity, where we know it's really important, but it's really weird. And it makes us really uncomfortable. And so... Um, Big theologians and people who are into scripture and writing in the lectionary series are like, we need to talk about communion more. And people are like, but we really don't want to because it's weird. Um, And so they're like, we're going to make you do it. So we're going to do it four weeks in a row because then even if you do what I did last week and you talk about Paul instead, you still have to come back to it. Okay, so communion. Let's talk about Eucharist, communion, um, we have all these terms for it because we think if we use colorful language that that will somehow make it um, seem more legitimate. And it, but it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? And you get that feeling a little bit in today's gospel, right? Just like, uh, Jesus? Um, what you're describing is cannibalism? And that makes us feel weird. And that is actually historically, ac- not cannibalism. I mean, cannibalism is historically accurate, but we won't get into that. Um, Down our party. Uh, but the idea that people were really, really uncomfortable with early Christians because they talk in this way. And they talk about eating their God. And then they also talk about, like, the kiss of peace but they're all brothers and sisters. I mean, do you get how, like, early Christians were like, well, they're kind of odd. Um, and so what we've done over the last um, couple thousand years is just kind of, well, we, um, we talk about it a little bit, but in very vague terms. And then we're like, oh, but, you know, Jesus is love. And we're like, oh, yeah, I can get on board with that. But um, the whole Eucharist thing, that's, that's different, isn't it? It's kind of an uncomfortable topic. So let's talk about it a little bit and see if we can flesh some of this stuff out. Wow, that got really awkward, didn't I? I saw that face. You know, like, flesh it out? Ew, it just got weirder. Um, okay, so what are we talking about when we talk about the Eucharist? Because we're kind of used to um, the, the idea it's the blood and and wine, and bread, and flesh, and all that stuff, right? Um, And so one of the debates throughout Christianity has been what exactly is going on here. Um, And there's a whole, here's what I'm going to tell you as Episcopalians. We don't have an exact answer. Um, So you can go all the way from, it is exactly, like Roman Catholicism, it is the blood and flesh, and it is literally that, and we're eating it. You know, that's my magic hands. You see my magic hands working back there? Woo! Um, You guys didn't realize I was so magical, did you? Batteries, communion, I got it all. Okay, all the way to the other um, side, which is, well, it's a representation. Um, It is something that we do as a community, and it helps us remember the importance of that moment. So, and you will find Episcopalians on any part of that spectrum. So, here's what I really want you to hear today. If you hear nothing else from me, ever, I want you to hear this. There's no right answer. 
I mean, there probably is, but we're all going to be dead when we find it out. So wherever you stand on this spectrum is okay. There is not a, you're going to get kicked out of the Episcopal Church if you're like really not on board with the whole eating Jesus thing, or if you're like, ah, uh, but it's something magical happens. Whatever, you're good, you're good. The important thing is that we wrestle with it. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. We want easy answers, right? You want me to come down here after you hear a really disturbing piece of scripture and you want me to fix it, right? Dude, I want to fix it sometimes. But that's not faith in religion, is it? Because communion isn't knowledge that we get, that we study it long enough. Okay, now I get it. Now I'm ready to take communion. That's not how it works. That's not how faith and religion work either. But we want it to be that way, don't we? We want it to be logical. We want it to make sense. We want it to think, if I read enough about it on Wikipedia, don't read Wikipedia, but um, if I study it long enough, if I get enough degrees in this, if I really think about it long enough, it will make sense, right? We want religion to be knowledge. We want to get it. It isn't. It isn't. It's something that we get when we feel it. And so one of the big debates in um, church stuff is what we call open table. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I'm a huge proponent of open table. One, because I'm 5'4", and I weigh, like, not much, and I'm not God's bouncer. So if you come up here, and I'm not going to ask. Be like, so, are you baptized? Oh, um, so how you feel with all your brothers and sisters in Christ? You, you okay with them? You been sinning? Okay, okay, then you can take communion. Not a bouncer. Do I look like a bouncer to you? But the other important thing is that this isn't my table. This isn't mine. Now, we pay a lot of money for it, but, um, but it's God's. And so I really, truly believe, really, really, truly, that it's not a knowledge-based thing. You don't earn the right to receive communion. You feel the need for relationship, and you know that there's something in that relationship that feeds you, and you want to be there in that, which is why, you know, we have kids who, as soon as they can swallow, they're taking communion, or we have adults who are not quite ready for that yet, and that's okay because there's not a right answer. The right answer is within you, and that's what this is all about. This is all about what is within you. And we want it to be simple. We want it to be knowledge-based, but it isn't. And I can't make it knowledge-based for you. But here's what I am going to tell you. Here's what I am going to say. At some point, it makes sense. And here's the other thing that I'm going to say that I think is really, really important because we don't pay any attention to it because we're so into earning the right to have enough knowledge to do these things because we like having a system where you earn things, right? We like having rules. But how do we get to the bread gospels? Do you remember what happened a few weeks ago? The fish and the loaves happened a few weeks ago. People were curious. There's something different about this guy. There's something different. And I don't know what it is but I feel that something is different, and I want to be near him. I want to hear what he has to say. I want to understand this Jesus person. They forgot to pack their lunch. And Jesus shows up. And Jesus shows up in the bread and in the fish. He feeds them. He doesn't say, well, do you know what I'm about to do? I mean, do you really understand that I'm the Christ? Do you really understand that I'm the Messiah? Like, tell me the catechism. Do you get the catechism? I mean, have you studied it for like 18 months and been improved? 
right? He doesn't do that. They experience Jesus first, and then, then he proceeds to teach them. What I'm going to tell you is that there are as many entrances into God as there are humans in relationship with God. There's not a right answer. And sometimes we don't get it until we get it. There isn't a right answer. There isn't a question. There isn't a creed that can be said that earns you the right to be in a relationship with God. By your creation and God's love for you, that, that, that is the creed. The creed is there's something different here. And I want to understand what that is. I don't know what that is, but I'm really curious about it. So, I know that we like easy answers. We want them. We want rules. But when it comes to God, the rule is openness. And I don't have a whole lot to say. I can't fix communion, and I can't tell you where on the spectrum you're going to land on it. But I will tell you this, go ahead, wrestle with it, because there are some parts of it that are uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to talk about eating Jesus. I'll tell you, when I was a little kid, I refused to chew the communion wafer. I don't think I chewed a communion wafer until I was in college, to be perfectly frank. But when I was a little kid, that weirded me out. I was, so I would let it dissolve on my tongue because it seemed violent. It seemed wrong to, like, chew on Jesus. But isn't that what we want? We want our kids, we want us to wrestle with that. What does that mean? Because the actual language in the Greek here really is a kind of violent. It's to chew, to gnaw, to crunch with your teeth. It is strong language. Jesus chooses this language. He chooses it. He means it to be what it says. So as you wrestle with it, we'll get there. You'll get there. And you might land anywhere on that spectrum. But you want to know what? That's okay. Because the most important place to land is right there. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.